Hey, this is the Road Hammers. You're listening to TNC Radio Live. Welcome in TNC Radio Live. This is Building Strong Minds with Dr. Christopher Cortman. I'm Tom Kelly, and Dr. Cortman's been doing uh, psychotherapy for, gosh, a long time. I've done about well, 80, we're going to go with a long time. Yeah, done about eighty thousand hours of it. That's uh, that's a lot of therapy, and that's just the ther- therapy where he was the patient. He's been the doctor. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. That's. <laughs> Yeah, I could use that many hours sometimes. Well, yeah, I bet. I bet. Um, I asked you this a long time ago. I'm going to start here tonight just because it just landed there. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of people are uh, still finding us and, and weren't listening a, a year ago when we started this program. How do you stay psychologically fit? I mean, when you're sitting there all day long listening to people uh, go through their issues and talk about the problems, some of which are horrific. I mean, you hear the worst of the worst of the stories. Um, how do you put that in a nice little box and sleep at night? Yeah, well, I'm glad my wife walked out of the room when you asked how I stay psychologically fit because <laughs> I can say anything I want now without any accountability there you but, go um you know it, it it may very well be debatable how fit i am but i i understand the question that you have what is it that you do so as to not be overwhelmed by the negative energy uh by by hearing so much pain and suffering um and that that's all true and and it, it can be it can be very, very toxic at times to listen to some people who are extremely negative. But that said, what I do is I tend to focus on the healing much more than the the horrible stories. Life comes complete with a lot of uh, tragedy. Life comes complete with with loss and sadness and trauma and, you know, When people come to me, it's because they want help with it. And, you know, especially if it's their idea, there's always the opportunity to see them get better. Uh, I talked to a woman a few hours ago um, who's been depressed a couple of times over the last several years. And most recently, she was depressed, Tom, because... She's dealing with uh, a husband who has demonstrated some significant signs of dementia. And he can be um, very confused and, uh, you know, he always wants to manage the checkbook, which he no longer can. And he wants to drive, which his doctor said he no longer can. And yet... He doesn't understand that there have been some things that have happened to him. And she is challenged by having to, you know, to deal with him 24-7. But one of the reason I'm mentioning this, this fresh story is because I had the chance to tell her today that your life has gotten worse and you're better. Your life is worse. The circumstances of your life are worse than they were, but you are better than you were. And she was so delighted to hear that. She asked me to say that a second time. (laughs) Because I wanted her to hear that her husband has progressed in terms of the symptoms of dementia. That's not progression as we look at it. That's regression. He's worse, right? But she's better because she's handling it better and and I said, what well, you have, the best antidepressant in the world, you have hope. You now see this as manageable because you've got a team of people behind you, not only myself, but your husband's physician, your two daughters, you have a, a helpful brother and a son, and, and, and you have these people who are, are teammates of yours, 
And you also now have a belief that says someday, if and when this is too much, I'll have to have my husband placed in a different facility, but that'll be okay because he'll have care that I can't give him and I'll make sure it's close enough that I can see him. In other words, she's already made this okay enough in her mind that as this disease of dementia continues to, to progress, it continues to take over this poor guy's life, she no longer sees it as, you know, I'm, I'm defeated. And, mm-hmm. and so I point this whole story out because a lot of people wait for their lives to get better the lives to change for the better and and life just does what it does right things just go the way they go people do what they do but getting better is is an inside job as they say happiness is an inside job if she didn't do the work she's been doing she would not be better she would be worse because his condition has gotten worse and that's what she has been obsessing about so Anyway, back to the, the, the central point here. We have, to, we have to heal, as we're talking about in the 10th truth, not because time passes, but because of our ability to, to heal from, from, from letting go, from putting things in a, in a better place, from releasing pain. Um, it's my fantasy when I meet a, a reasonably uh, normal, high-functioning person to say to them that I want you to be able to put everything that has ever happened to you away. I want you to be free of regrets and free of resentments. I want all of your energy in the here and now. I don't want you stuck in the past any longer. I want you to be able to look forward with anticipation to what's coming up in life but that whatever has happened to this point, you have put away. You can tell stories about it. You can say, boy, that was painful. You can say, you can laugh, but you're, enter- you're not stuck back there. And again, how do you know you're stuck back there? It still hurts. It still overwhelms you. You have, you have nightmares. You have flashbacks. Tom, I met a guy this week who's 100 years old. He's going to be 101 in a few months. I, I've never had an outpatient in all this time that was that old. And I'm hoping he doesn't take me back to his childhood because we're going to run out of time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, but it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you coming to see me now? That's a good question. What are you doing in my practice now that you waited a hundred and a half years to see me. And interestingly enough, he's not telling me about Iraq. He's not telling me about Afghanistan. He's not telling me about Nam. He's not telling me about Korea. He's telling me about World War II. I don't have people who remember World War II like that, but this guy has some stuff left over from World War II that he still has not made peace with. And, you know, after he said that, I was thinking about you in this program. It's like if ever there's a, there's proof positive that time doesn't heal all wounds. I mean, this World War II ended in 1945. You do the math. We're, we're coming up on like 80 years. That's 78 years or whatever it is. Anyway, he... Um, he needs to do some active work to finally put this stuff away. And so over the past couple of weeks, I've been sharing that, you know, there's a process that seems to work well, at least I think it does. And and I've been at this for 80,000 hours, as you say, and that is we have to go back. We have to go back to the things that you don't want to talk about. In fact, that's the first place we have to go. We have to go into those places that says, uh, keep out. So you have the skull and crossbones at the door, like forbidden. We, we're not, we don't go in those places. Yeah, we got to go in those places. You got to take me to the worst things, the things that still hurt, the things that, you know, this guy's still having nightmares. His poor wife, 
you know, she's, I guess she would be considered, uh, she's 92. I guess she's like jailbait because, you know, he, he he's a hundred. <laughs> but um, anyway, she, she like has to wake him up because he's thrashing about and, and, and he's embarrassed by some of the things he'll, he'll kick towards her and say things. And, you know, it's not about her, of course, but he's, whatever he's battling in the middle of the night, we, we, has to be dealt with. His plane was shot down a couple of times, and we got to go there. We got to talk about what happened in it, and we have to remember. We have to go back. We have to. He has to tell his story to me. He has to feel his feelings. He has to express, and he has to release. It's it's remember, feel, express, release, and then we'll reframe it. And hopefully, how we're going to reframe it is it's going to be, this is the really cool stuff you did for our country. And, you know, that's a war that very few Americans uh, um, look, disagree with. You know, we had to go into World War II, and we did save mankind as we know it by by winning that war, right? And, you know, that was a war that everybody was proud of, the Americans, and that was a war where... You know, we, we came up with the uh, the term the greatest generation. Everybody sacrificed and everybody did what we, we needed to do as a country to to save the world for, from some really bad stuff going on. So anyway, I want him to be able at the end of the day to release his terrible stories, whatever the specifics are. I want him to finally have a sense of peace about this. You need to break? Yeah, we're, we're, let's take a break, and we're going to come back and talk about how, you know, talk more about that process as we continue to talk about the 10th truth of the social yeah. black belt right here on TNC Radio. Live. Stay right there. This vlog on TNC Radio. Live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Common mistakes truck drivers continue to make. Getting into a car wreck is a risk everyone takes from driving a vehicle. Safety is not guaranteed while driving. Although you may be alert and driving safe, others may not. Wrecks of any kind are almost always traumatic. Wrecks that include heavy-duty trucks can be even more horrific because their injuries can be more severe and life-threatening. Truck drivers go through a long, extensive training process and must pass several exams to get their CDL. Even though truck driving school prepares truckers for life on the road, there are still mistakes truckers continue to make. Speeding. There may be some instances where you're running late to get a load delivered on time, so you speed to get there. Speeding is dangerous for all drivers. Going over the speed limit is not only illegal, it's risky and can lead to injuries or even death. Avoid speeding at any time. It's better to arrive late than risking your life and others. Roll over. Truck rollovers are due to a driver taking a turn too fast, inexperience, or load size. Rollovers tend to happen when drivers get too comfortable behind the wheel and forget to take extra precautions while driving. Remember to always pay attention and be aware of what you're hauling. Tailgating Tailgating or following too close is something every driver should avoid. Driving too close behind a vehicle is extremely dangerous for heavy-duty truck drivers due to the weight and momentum of the truck. Keep your distance while driving. There should be at least three seconds between each vehicle on the road. Driving while tired. Sleep is very important for the overall well-being and safety of a truck driver. Due to the long hauls, truckers rarely get the recommended eight hours of sleep every night. Truck drivers can drive up to 11 hours a day for seven consecutive days. Drivers who fail to follow these guidelines put their lives and others at risk. Blind spots. Semi-trucks are notorious for their blind spots. Most blind spots are due to the inability to see when looking through a rear view or side mirror. Truckers must always be aware of their blind spots while driving. Failing to do so can result in serious injuries. Distracted driving. It's hard not to get distracted on the road when driving for 11 hours a day. Common distractions are eating while driving, Looking at the GPS, texting and talking on the phone, truck drivers should avoid texting and driving at all times. They should also consider investing in a headset to use when talking on the phone while driving. Weather conditions. 
When the weather changes, drivers need to adjust their speed and distance between other cars. Driving too fast and close in the rain or snow can result in a severe accident. There may be times when it's not safe to drive even after reducing the speed. Make sure to never drive when you feel uncertain of the weather conditions. This blog was brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. I'm Shelly Johnson with Kathy Takaro. You can hear us Tuesdays on TNCRadio.live at 8 p.m. Eastern on Women Road Warriors. And don't miss Steve Summers' Overnight Drive right here on TNCRadio.live. Weeknights, midnight to 5 a.m. Eastern. Brought to you by Hot Shot Secret. Welcome back in TNC Radio Live. This is Building Strong Minds with Dr. Christopher Cortman. So, Dr. Chris, uh, let's see. Well, where would you like to pick up? Well, we were talking for a minute off the air, and um, I wanted to share with the audience since I just mentioned about my oldest patient ever uh, as an outpatient, a hundred year old man, um, Venice. Florida, the town I practice in, is the town with the oldest population per capita of uh, any town, 10,000 people or more in the U.S. And um, so since we we specialize in older folks, um, I know a couple who, um, who went down to the courthouse recently because they decided that they wanted to get divorced and they had uh, a moment with the judge who looked at them and said, you want to get divorced? How old are you guys? And the man said, I'm 97. And the woman said, I'm 95. He said, what? You're 97 and 95 and now you want to get divorced? They said, that's right, your honor. And he said, may I ask why? And they said, yeah, sure. We were just waiting until all the kids died. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, being in a, in a town that, that features older folks like, like we have here, I, I see a lot of things that people really need to take care of in their lives because they're not finished. You know, you need to take care of your will, right? You need to take care of um, who gets what. You need to take care of uh, messes you've made in your house. And sometimes you need to to call people in your family that you haven't spoken to in in years and kind of clean things up if you're going to die. Um, and, And I guess in my mind, we need to do that about all the old resentments, traumas, anything that's still not finished. You know, the, the great Fritz Perls, the, uh, the theorist that came up with uh, gestalt, which means wholeness in German, like the, the whole is the gestalt. Um, the, the gestalt therapy, he was all about finishing up unfinished business. Whatever is not finished for you, I'm a big believer in it's time to finish that. If you're coming into my office, if it's a trauma that keeps repeating in your head because you haven't finished it, you haven't digested it, if it's an old resentment or, you know, several people recently have been coming in talking about the fact that they are always living in a a fear of abandonment. And um, a couple of these people recently, all I had to do was ask them, where does this come from? And they they take me back to places. One did that today. He took me back to when he was a child, and and his mother would say, "Um, I don't know if I'm going to stay here. I'm going to leave you guys. And she would threaten that very often. And as a little boy, you know, whatever she was doing to try to, when she said these things, maybe she was angry, maybe she wanted to scare them straight. But it took its toll on him because he lived in fear that his mother was going to walk out. And it it does not take much. 
for, for people to, to have great fears of abandonment as a child because we're overwhelmed in this world. And, and, and that could stay with us. You know, I spoke to a man about two hours ago who is, um, I don't know, he's in his 70s, and um, he's never been on an airplane before. And because of a court case, they wanted to, to fly him up to the state capitol. And um, he said, but I'd be so afraid to do that because I wouldn't know where to go or what to do after that. And he's laughing at himself because he sounds like a child. But when you've never had those kinds of, you know, experiences, you, 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 you know, you, re, you revert back. And it's, it's just fascinating because people will carry around these things that have upset them or scared them or angered them. You know, there's so many people walking around with a deep hatred, um, a, a type of resentment that, that, that that's actually toxic for them. Um, there, there's a, a Chinese proverb that says, those who seek revenge should first dig two graves. You know, the hatred is going to kill you as, as well as anyone you're looking to destroy. And, you know, whatever someone else has done to you, as long as you hate them, that's your poison. That's your cancer. That, that's, that's your life being destroyed, which leads to a, uh, a, a concept that people of faith are indoctrinated with, if you will, and that is forgiveness. That um, whatever it is that happened to you, it's important to forgive. Well, you know, being a, a church person as a boy and growing up in that environment, I heard all the time that you need to forgive so you could be forgiven. I mean, there are all kinds of uh, Bible verses and promises that say, you know, you're going to be forgiven. You need to forgive others. You know, that God will separate us from our sins as far as the east is from the west. That he will bury our sins as if in the deepest sea. And, and all these promises about, you know, God being able to wash the slate clean. But then there's a, 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 a command that, that we forgive others as we've been forgiven. But you know what no preacher has ever said that I've heard anyway is why we don't forgive, why we hold on. And, you know, we talked about the purposefulness of, of behavior in the third truth. And, and some people hold on to their resentment without even realizing why there's a payoff in keeping their resentment. For instance, I... I, I've come up with at least four or five of, uh, I think, are, are good reasons why people do what they do when it comes to resentment. And one of those is the moment that I let go of my resentment, I am now 100% responsible for my own happiness and success. It is so much easier to blame my mother for dressing me funny as a kid than it is to take responsibility and saying, you know, this is my life now. This, this is up to me to, to, to be well. And yet I talk to people all the time who are resenting their ex partners business wise or their former wives or their fathers or their stepfathers or grandparents or whoever it was. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to first say to them, take me to the pain. Let's go there. But I want to tell you, when I meet you, my goal is that we clean all of that up, that we finish that, that you, the goal of therapy is not to hate anyone. It's to, it's to finish the resentment. It's to let go of the hurt. It's to champion all of that. So I'm, I'm in today and I'm capable of living as a, as a high-functioning human being. I can look into the future. And, and I like telling people, Tom, that a, a high-functioning human being is like a brand-new car. You know, the brand-new car is, is incredible because, you know, the, the steering wheel works fine and the seats go back and forth and the wipers work and the brakes are beautiful. And, you know, the taillights come on when you hit the brakes. And... 
Same thing with a human being. Like it, when we're in a fully functioning human being, we're capable of a belly laugh. We're capable of laughing to the point of, of tears. You, I know people who don't laugh anymore. That's like that's broken. When, when you're a fully functioning human being, you could cry when it's appropriate. You could see a sad movie or, or see an animal get hit and, and be in tears. You could listen to stories that are truly sad stories, or you could cry over joy, joyful things. You know, you could watch sporting events and see people in, in great tears because of uh, overcoming great adversity and making it to the top. Um, it, when, when you're a fully functioning human being, you can experience guilt. You can experience joy. You can experience anxiety. But, it, it, but not all the time. You don't live in, in all of those things. Or you're capable of, of all the parts work, is my point. And if your parts don't work, lots of times that's because they're broke. They're, you're stuck back somewhere. You're, you're not the same person since your wife left. You know, you, you've never been the same since your brother died. You, you're not the same person since your mother took her life. Or whatever your thing was. And that's when people really need therapy because our goal is to help you heal from that and, you know, kind of get unstuck. Stop me if, uh, no, if you uh, need a, a well, break. I was going to ask you, do you, do you find people, well, let me, I'm going to make this more of a kind I think some people, though, are afraid that they get to the pain part, you know, and, and pick at that, and that the healing part won't won't be a part of it. They they don't even know what to expect. They just know if, if something hurts. It, the, the old joke right. is, Doc, whenever I pick up my right shoulder, it hurts. And the doctor goes, well, don't do it. That's don't right. pick up your right shoulder. I mean, that makes sense, but that doesn't cure anything. Right. You know, every time I think about my, uh, my mother leaving us, I cry, so I try not to think about it. Yeah, I get that, but that doesn't heal anything. Right. And then we're hearing that time doesn't heal wounds, not just because of my 100-year-old patient, but everybody who's experienced that, you know, time has gone by and they're no better than they were. You know, time has gone, you know, decades have gone by and I'm more resentful exactly. than I was before. I'm not less, I'm more. Exactly. And And, yeah, so... You know, when when you ask that, I, I, I want to say, of course, it's 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 normal for people to avoid pain. That's the number one response to unpleasant experiences. To you know, to, to things that are uncomfortable. The number one way to, that humans handle discomfort is avoidance. And, and I don't say that's crazy. I say that's normal. Mm -hmm. However, there are things we have to face. You know. In, in our lives, if we're ever going to get where we need to go, there's a there's a generation now um, of kids who are not driving as much as we used to drive, and they're avoiding that. And why are they avoiding that? Well, they're avoiding a number of things, um, but one of the reasons is that you would avoid um, driving is because it's scary. It's scary to start driving. You don't have any natural driving skills the roads are crazy you know if you live in a place where you live or where i live it's crowded the roads and there are crazy drivers and there's lots of traffic and you know and people avoid that but the answer to, to living a normal and happy life is not to avoid things because they're scary avoid things if they're dangerous to you like i i have successfully avoided crack all these years and the reason I have never tried crack, Tom, is because I, I'm afraid I'll like it. Uh, I'm afraid I'll enjoy it and I'll want to do it again, and then I'll ruin my whole life. It'll go down the toilet. So I avoid that. And But there are other things I know I have to face, and they're scary also. But I think I decide beforehand this is scary, but it's good for me to do it. It's scary because the results might not be great nor what I'm looking for, but I, but I have to do it. So other things, I don't have to do it. They're scary and they're bad for me. 
You know, I've, I've heard about people who, um, they, they do this thing called hood surfing. They stand on top of uh, the hood of a car while yeah. the car is going. Yeah, I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that, Tom, because, first of all, I'm afraid. And second of all, I don't really see the upside. Right. What I see right. is death or brain damage or some combination. And I'm not going to do that. So there are things to face that we're afraid of, and there are things to run from because we're afraid of and because they're not in our best interest. And, and every parent knows that. And every parent does that with their kids. No, you have to face this. But I have a big English exam. Can I just stay home? No, can't stay home. You're not sick. You have to face the big English exam because that's how we're, we're growing. That's how we get where, to, where we need to go. So, yeah, when things are scary, when things are painful, Sometimes we have to face them. Physical therapy after knee surgery, man, that hurts. But they say very first day, right? Very first day, you got to do this. That's right. Otherwise, you'll never fully recover from the surgery. Exactly. All right. Hey, now we're going to take our break. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. You're listening to TNC Radio Live on a Monday night. It's Building Strong Minds with Dr. Christopher Cortman. Stay right there. Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher Cortman, and now for the Mental Health Minute. My third grade teacher, Mrs. Tuminello, used to say, a word to the wise, and we would all have to say in unison, is sufficient. Well, I have learned after 35 plus years of therapy, a word to the wise isn't always sufficient. In fact, sometimes, we need to be encouraged. We need to be reminded. We need to get a second DUI. We need to have somebody walk out on us. We need our physician to say, if you don't stop smoking next year, I'll be here for the physical, but you won't. Sometimes we need to have things repeated over and over until we finally get it. And sometimes it takes many words to the wise to be sufficient. And Mrs. Tuminello, God bless you wherever you might be at this time. Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher Cortman, and now for the Mental Health Minute. We're talking about stress and how for some people, stress comes from jumping out of an airplane while other people relax by doing such. We talked about Hans Selye and his general adaptation syndrome that demonstrates that we go from alarm reaction to resistance to exhaustion, which leads to disease and then to death. But now I want to talk to you about how we shut off the stress response. And this is very simple. What stops the mind from perceiving threat is when we believe that this is okay. You've done this thousands of times in your life, you just don't know that you have. For instance, anytime you say something like, ah, it's only money and money comes and goes, or you say, you know, there's nothing we can do about that, so let's just move on, or it's in the Lord's hands, just leave it to God, or, you know, the surgeon said that she got all of it, and I'm going to trust her that I'll be fine from here. There are so many ways that we can accept what's happening, and by doing so, shut off the stress response. In fact, one of the challenges I would have for you is think, what in my life is stressing me right now, and what can I do about it? And that hopefully will include things like problem solving, and maybe you'll need a, a financial manager or maybe you'll need some physical tests, or whatever it is you need. But once you have done everything you can do about something, you'll need to let go of the rest. The mind needs to say, it's okay, in order to shut off the stress response. And then, maybe you'll be able to do some skydiving. You're listening.
listening to TNC Radio. Live. Remember to tune into the Truckers Network Radio Show with Shelley Johnson weekdays at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. Welcome back in TNC Radio. Live. Building strong minds with Dr. Christopher Cortman. And uh, so, Dr. Cortman, where do you want to pick it up from here? Oh, so the big key in healing to me is about letting go. And, you know, letting go can be kind of a nebulous thing. I, I think letting go is the best two-word definition of what forgiveness really is. It's just letting go of something. It's deciding, you know, I can't keep this anymore. It's not good for me to hold on. I'm going to let it go. And, you know, you can do this. You can do this by going through your house and you can say, we have to do a better job uh, with this closet. What of these things do we need to keep and what do we need to let go? And sometimes there's a little bit of struggling going on. But by the end of it, you know, there's a place here. I don't know about in Texas, but there's a place here called Goodwill. And we'll have the conversation. You want to take this to Goodwill? And that means we we give it away, and hopefully they can sell it and, and do whatever they do to make the community that much better. But, it, you know, it's letting go. At one point, once you say, you know, yeah, I need to let – we need to give that, it, it's gone. Whatever that thing is, it's gone, and and hopefully you never give it another thought. It's like that's done. Maybe you've been keeping it for years and years, but letting go means to finally part with it. Um, a, a person was saying today that um, I really need to to let go uh, of something that that I was just very angry about, and and I was saying, well, what what's your plan? How are you gonna How are you gonna let this go? And um, interestingly, actually, th- this was a conversation we had one week ago when I saw him for the first time. But what he did in between. He actually took a night away from his wife. He went into the guest room and he locked the door and it was just going to be him and God. And he was praying. He was so angry with people who had terminated his job and told them they were retiring him, you know, a 71, whatever year old guy. He, He said, you're retiring me. I don't, isn't that my decision? No, we're retiring you. And, and somebody said, you're a liability, which he was so insulting. He was furious with that. Anyway, he went into this locked room to talk to God in prayer. And the way he tells it, because he told me this this morning, Tom, he was in prayer and he said to God, I have to let go of this. It's making me crazy and I'm I'm taking it out on my wife. She doesn't deserve this. And he said, I heard the voice of God saying, I've been waiting for you to give me this. And it's mine now. I've got it. Let it go. It's not yours anymore. And treat your wife well. Love her. And, you know, did God say those things? I don't know what God said. I don't know what God said. Do I believe him? I actually do. But it doesn't matter what I believe. It matters what he believes. And he believes that he had an encounter with God and God took something from him that he needed to give up. And he said, I'm never, I've am never, i never been better. I feel so relieved. And, you know, is this going to continue? I don't know where it goes from here. I just know that letting go is a real healer. And, and people can let go by writing a, a letter. And people can let go by going to a grave site and saying everything they needed to say about the or to the abusive grandfather. Or letting go can happen in an imagery. I've told you about that on the show before. Um, I'm thinking of a time where I did an imagery with a, a woman who was uh, 21 years old when she was uh, raped on a date. And... Um, in the imagery, um, she was talking to this guy, and, and I was um, talking on, on his behalf. The guy is, is in prison for things like that. 
while she was talking, and this was an imagined scene, she opened up her eyes and looked at me and she said, I want an apology from him. So I literally made sure he said that. Did he really apologize to her? No, he's in prison. He didn't even talk to her. But in her mind, with her eyes closed and imagining talking to him and hearing from him, she got what she needed. She put that away. That was done. That's done. If I talk to her today about the rape, we put that away. We put that away. Not because time passed. When I met her, she was 55. The rape was when she was 21. Did time heal that? No, time did nothing. Time passed. Time does what time does. We had to do something where she got to express her feelings and and hear what she needed to hear. And it all culminated, if you will, in letting go. I don't need to keep that anymore. That's done. Whether I give it to God, whether I put it in some kind of a box, where I put it in a different place in my mind where I say... Yeah, that doesn't matter anymore. That's not important. Um, I don't need to keep that anymore. I have to let that go. As as an 82-year-old woman once said to me, she said in the middle of her session, what I hear you say, doctor, is you want me to let go of everything that makes my head crazy. And I stood up and I said, that's beautiful. I'm going to my desk and writing that down. That's the best definition of forgiveness I've ever heard of. I got to let go of everything that makes my head crazy. Yeah. But that's the- so anyone who comes to me, that's what they're going to get. Whatever happened to you, I'll believe you. I'll uh, I'll hear your story and feel compassion and sadness and but I promise you where we're going, we got to we gotta say goodbye to this. We got to make peace with this. So you probably want to break again, and it's okay if you want to. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And, well, no, you know, I'll tell you what, we've got a couple more minutes here. Let's, let's do this real quick. You, you talked about this guy spending this time with God. Um, how mm-hmm. important is prayer as a part of this overall process? You know, whether it's it's prayer or it's meditation or, or it's imagery or, or, or what, whatever it is, the, it, remember that this is about letting go. It, is prayer helpful? It can absolutely be helpful, especially if you believe in a higher power that somebody's listening to you. If I'm just saying things and they're hitting the ceiling... And bouncing down, you know, and maybe that's all that's happening. But people of faith have uh, a belief. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm, I'm still doing red tide. <coughs> um, people of faith believe that they're being listened to. People of faith believe that there's somebody that cares about them and actually knows the thoughts and intents of the heart. You know, knows me individually. It's 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 an unbelievably um, difficult notion to wrap my mind around because there's like eight billion people on planet Earth. The idea of a God being personally involved with each one of us is is you know it's mind blowing. But we have research that says that people of faith, people who pray, they're happier. Yeah, they uh, adjust. Yeah to difficulties better they they bounce back from illness from divorce they have more joy they have less anxiety they die easier as long as they believe in a a loving god a positive being um as as long as they don't you know have this idea of god as being a punitive angry old man in the sky who's going to drop an anvil on their heads um, the, the research says it doesn't even matter what your faith is. It matters that you have a faith in a, bene- in a benevolent being or universe, something positive, something good, something loving. That's, that we get good results from that. So prayer is, uh, you know, we have research that says uh, prayer can 
work for some reason. You know, you know, people can't prove that there's a God, but there's some pretty good stuff that says prayer can be effective. And to that end, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we, we started introducing earlier today, and we'll be introducing more this week, the uh, 24-hour prayer line for truck drivers that's uh, now available, that uh, is, is available to us from TFC Global, who comes on, uh, it, it, uh, folks from TFC Global will be on the air here in just a little while. Um, so I'm going to play this real quick, then we'll take a commercial break and come back and wrap things up. You're listening to TNC Radio Live. Hello, I'm Ron Samuels. I put it in reverse gear here Monday through Thursday nights at 10, 9 central on TNC Radio Live. Do you believe in the power of prayer? Whether you're moving down the highway or taking a break, now's a good time to take a moment to tell God your hopes, concerns, and gratitude. You want someone to pray with? No problem. Just call the TFC Global 24-Hour Prayer Line. It's 866-515-9406. By the way, if you're using the TNC Radio.Live app, just press the prayer line button to be connected to a prayer warrior who will confidentially pray with and for you. The number again, 866-515-9406, or tap the prayer line button at the TNC Radio.Live app. This blog is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Four simple ways to improve your physical health as a truck driver. Being a truck driver is a rewarding career. However, it's not very rewarding for your physical health. A truck driver's lifestyle makes it difficult for them to be healthy. Because of their lifestyle, truckers are more likely to develop serious health issues like obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, and more. Although a truck driver's lifestyle doesn't promote healthy living, it doesn't mean that a truck driver cannot be healthy while on the road. There are several ways you can improve your health on the road. Here are four things you can start doing today to improve your physical health on the road as a truck driver. Avoid harmful foods. Avoiding unhealthy foods is way harder than it sounds. As a truck driver, your healthy food choices are extremely limited. While it may seem impossible to completely cut out unhealthy foods from your diet, it might be a good idea to cut back. You can start cutting back on unhealthy foods by packing meals in your truck. That way, the next time you get hungry on the road, you can eat a much healthier meal instead of eating greasy, high-calorie fast food. Another way you can start cutting back on unhealthy foods is to make a list of unhealthy items you eat every day and start slowly replacing them with a healthier option. For example, if you drink soda three times a day, cut back to two, then to one, and then none. Stock up on healthy foods. To live a healthier lifestyle, you have to cut back on heavily processed foods. Unfortunately, a truck driver's diet heavily consists of processed foods. Stocking up on healthy groceries is one of the best ways you can improve your physical health. When grocery shopping before your trip, avoid frozen pre-made meals, sodas, fried foods, chips. Instead, look for whole grain, fruits, veggies, and healthy fats. Start exercising. Exercise is essential to a driver's overall physical and mental health. Truck drivers have to get creative to stay fit while on the road. Finding the time to exercise can be a challenge for truck drivers. Drivers spend up to 11 hours a day on the road. After working all day, exercising may seem like the last thing you want to do, but you'll thank yourself later. Exercising a few times a week will not only improve your physical health, but also mental health. Get a good night's rest. The right amount of sleep is crucial for a truck driver. Lack of sleep can make driving dangerous. A study shows that long-haul truck drivers obtain less sleep than the required amount of alertness on the job. Truckers need a good night's sleep to be fully alert and ready to take on the road the next morning. Truck drivers travel several hundred miles each day. To reach their destination on time, they'll have to prioritize sleep so they can be alert and ready to take on the day. Not only is sleep an important factor for job performance, but it's also important for lowering stress levels and improving your immune system. Now here are some ways to promote better sleep. Turn off electronics an hour before bed. Invest in a good mattress and pillow. Put up curtains in your truck cab. Avoid caffeine before bed. And exercise. This blog was brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net.
Dot. Our grocery stores are stocked. Our packages arrive in just a few short days. No matter the day or season, we can thank America's truck drivers for the efficient delivery of over 10 billion tons of goods a year that we rely on. On this National Truck Driver Appreciation Week, we offer a big thank you to professional truck drivers for hauling the everyday goods that meet our daily needs. We thank a trucker. Brought to you by Trucking Moves America Forward at TruckingMovesAmerica.com. Follow us on social media at Trucking FWD. All right, we're coming back in for the final segment tonight. Building Strong Minds with Dr. Christopher Cortman. Boy, this hour goes by fast, doesn't it? Every week. Every week. And the weeks seem to go by faster and faster. Here we are already at the beginning of March. Ooh. Um, so uh, let's start off with this. Uh, this stuff we've been talking about for the last couple of months now, all around these uh, the social black belt, the ten truths, all that kind of stuff, also available in book format for those who want to go back and and read more about it, perhaps take notes, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, a couple of different books that people could get their hands on. Tell us about them. Yeah, if uh, if your audience is a teenager and adolescent, the book called The Social Black Belt is uh, just for them. And it's these same 10 truths that we've been talking about. If um, your audience is an adult, then the original book is Your Mind, an Owner's Manual for a Better Life. And uh, that has the original 10 truths just written for an adult rather than an adolescent audience. And yes, there are, um, there are audio versions of the books and, um, you know, for people who drive trucks, for instance, who want to keep their eyes on the road and listening instead of reading, um, you know, that that can happen. Um, and if you're, a couple if of you're, other books, if you're but, an adolescent stuck in an adult body, you could go either way, right? You'd read either book. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, let's not make this a personal thing. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> but, yeah, let's just know that uh, there are options out there. Um, and, you know, again, the, 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 the prayer thing is good, but always remember that even though it's a 24-hour prayer line, you guys who were taught like I was to pray with your eyes closed, no doing that when you're driving. <laughs> yes, please do not. Uh, we'd appreciate yeah. that. They, yeah. they really need to make a pledge now. Uh, we have them listening. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. You know, pray all you want, but keep your eyes open. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that from Sunday school? Uh, if, yes. You know, some of those yeah. teachers would look around the room, and if they saw your eyes open, you would hear about it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mr. Lewis. <laughs> the Sunday school teacher. Yeah, he took that all very seriously. Yeah. 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 No. Mr. Kelly. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> I'm in trouble. Mr. Kelly. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, we're going to wrap things up here. We really appreciate you all being with us. We'll be back, of course, next week for another edition of Building Strong Minds. I'm Tom Kelly. He's Dr. Christopher Cortman, and we hope you have a fantastic week. Good night, everyone. Be well.